Hi everyone, this is Anurag again. Today we're just going to be quickly talking about a very interesting topic called Blastic Plasma Cytoid Dendritic Cell Neoplasm or also called BPDCN. Quite a long acronym, right? So it's a hematological neoplasm which consists of immature cells with a plasma cytoid dendritic cell differentiation. So first of all, let's just start with clinical features. It is most commonly uh, seen in the elderly population with a median age of about 62 to 70 years. Uh, in some cases, there is, uh, or in some studies, there is actually a bimodal uh, age distribution also seen. Uh, so it is much more common in males. That is almost four to six times more common in males as compared to females. Uh, it most commonly presents with uh, with skin lesions and the skin lesions can vary in color and size. They can be violaceous, they can be erythematous, um, they can be small skin lesions and they can even vary in number as well. That is, they can be single, they can be multiple, they can be plaques, they can be nodules. They usually involve the upper thorax, head and neck region and the upper extremities but can also involve other parts of the body as well. Some present with leukemic symptoms as well as uh, symptoms that are associated with pancytopenia. So what are the symptoms associated with pancytopenia? So pancytopenia means neutropenia. So there will be recurrent infections, uh, thrombocytopenia, so easy bruising and anemia, so fatigue. Uh, some patients also present with lymphadenopathy and um, this disease can also involve the central nervous system. So let's uh, move on to morphology. So let's just, for example, just take a case of a, say, 60-year-old male patient presenting with skin lesions in the upper extremities, which are, say, violaceous in color. And uh, we did a skin punch biopsy, and we'll come back to the text. Let's, let's first look at the biopsy. So this is the skin punch biopsy. So what we see that on the top, there is the epidermis, and then there is the dermis, which is involved with something that is blue in color. That is what I can appreciate on this low power. Going on a uh, higher power than the previous section, we see that this blue infiltrate that is all involved here is only involving the dermis and the subcutaneous structures. It is sparing the epidermis, which is here. So epidermis is not involved. So this is how BPDCN presents. That is, it does not involve the epidermis. It mostly involves the dermis. And let's just go into a even higher power. So here we see that there is this monotonous infiltrate of these uh, medium sized cells. You see here and um, let's just decrease the size of the pointer here. So there are these medium sized cells here uh, that and there is this diffuse infiltration of these cells. These are not forming any aggregates. They're not forming any glands. So they look like hematolymphoid cells and that is what uh, BPDCN is. It is a hematolymphoid malignancy. So some of these cells have kind of a cleared out chromatin. Some have some prominent nucleoli in them. Like for example here there might be a prominent nucleolus or it could just be a chromatin cluster. Like here there might be a prominent but not very prominent nucleolus in them. But some of them may have prominent nucleus so that's also called the immunoblastic morphology. Uh, so that's what we are seeing in the skin biopsy. Uh, so and there is this diffuse infiltration and their cytoplasm is kind of blue gray in color. Uh, so let's just go to the blood smear for this patient. So in this blood smear we see these cells here. So these kind of have a monocytoid appearance, but uh, they have uh, so they have scant gray cytoplasm. They have a very large nucleus which has a fine chromatin in it, and some of them even have this prominent nucleolus in them. So this um, is what we call as a blastic morphology. So just based on this morphology, we cannot say that this disease is BPDCN because this is just uh, favoring a blastic morphology, and that can be multiple. Um, uh, multiple diseases can present with that morphology and that is uh, they can be B lymphoblastic or T lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoma they can be acute myeloid leukemias and BPDCN that can also present with this blastic morphology another blood smear at even higher power we see that some of these cells have this cytoplasmic vacuoles and in BPDCN, interestingly, sometimes there are so many, um, you know, cytoplasmic vacuoles in the, uh, that they kind of string around the nucleus and that's called a string of pearls appearance as well. So again, we see that the blood is composed of these uh, blast appearing cells in them. 
So uh, let's just go back to the morphology first. Uh, so in morphology, so skin, in, uh, the infiltrate involves the dermis, can extend to subcutaneous tissue. Lymph nodes, uh, this infiltrate usually involves the medullary and the interfollicular areas. The bone marrow, uh, the cells can be scattered or it can range up to diffuse involvement by these cells. And just to recapitulate, the cells are monotonous with medium size uh, and are a plastic appearing. Uh, they have a scant gray cytoplasm, eccentric nuclei, which can have irregular contours, fine chromatin and nucleoli, which can be one to many. And sometimes the nucleolus can be prominent and sometimes they can be uh, not that prominent. And again, we talked about cytoplasmic vacuoles. Um, and uh, some of the cells in some cases can have some extensions that are... Um, you know, kind of uh, like pseudopodia like. Let me see if I can find it, uh, find one example of an extension here. Probably this cell here. You see that it's kind of extending here like this. So, I mean, yeah, but it's kind of uh, up to imagination, but that's not a very specific or required sign to call it, you know, um, uh, BPDCN and uh, some can have immunoblastoid morphology. So immunophenotype. So what is important for immunophenotype? If you remember nothing about BPDCN, remember this one, two, three, four, five, six. So BPDCN is usually positive for CD123, CD4 and CD56. Um, so that's what I have repeated here. Positive for CD4, CD56 can also be positive for HLA-DR. That's very important because some of the acute myeloid leukemias are also positive for HLA-DR. So that's very important important to distinct so it's very important to distinguish this from AML and um, it's positive for the plasma cytodendritic cell associated markers that is CD123, TCL1, CD303, CD2AP, BCL11A. Importantly, this can also be positive for CD2, CD7, which are like T-cell markers, then CD33, CD36, uh, which are myeloid markers, CD38, CD43, CD45, CD79A, which is a B-cell marker, and even TDT. Now, TDT is a marker which indicates B lympho uh, which indicates lymphoblastic uh, you know lineage so it can also be positive for TDT so a very important thing in BPDCN we have to rule out other lineages that is uh, it should be negative for lineage associated marker for B cells that is it should be negative for CD19 20 packs wife for T cells it should be negative for CD3 both surface and cytoplasmic um, LAT TCR alpha beta TCR gamma delta and also negative for NK cell markers that is CD16 TIA1 perforin and myeloid markers which includes MPO and then other myeloid markers which are uh, which support the diagnosis of a myeloid uh, leukemia uh, can be 11C, CD14, CD163 and lysozyme. So let's just look at, com quickly look at the combined images of flow cytometry and the immunohistochemistry. I'm just showing one uh, marker from each of these lineages but uh, trust me for this case they were all negative and we see this characteristic feature here. So the uh, this is first the flow dot plot that we see here and the cells of interest are highlighted in red and we see that they're positive for CD123. Again, the cells of interest are highlighted here in red and positive for CD4. And again, the cells are highlighted in red and they're positive for CD56. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that supports a BPDCN, but our work is not done yet. We have to rule out the B lineage. So we show that CD20 is negative and the other markers were also negative, the linear specific marker. CD3 is also negative. Negative. And interestingly, if you see here, this is TDT and some of these cells are weakly positive for TDT. So that's kind of a pitfall here. So we have to be very careful while analyzing these cases and have to look at the complete picture involving the flow cytometry as well as uh, the uh, as well as the immunohistochemistry. And lastly, uh, I also want to show the MPO that is for myeloid markers. So, M so again, our cells are highlighted in red and they are negative for MPO and also for CD79A, which is again a B cell marker. So uh, immunophenotypes, uh, so just to summarize quickly, morphology, uh, medium size blast like cells can have intracytoplasmic vacuoles can have pseudopodia and uh, uh, in the skin spare the epidermis and usually involve the dermis and subcutaneous structures immunophenotype one two three four five six also other plasma cytoidendritic cell markers can be positive for multiple other markers and other lineages have to be ruled out before we can make this diagnosis confidently
and molecular and genetics it usually has a complex karyotype which usually means there are at least more than equal to three um, abnormalities um, in the karyotype and some involve even structural abnormalities there are multiple mutations that have been detected but there is no mutation that's specific for BPDCN so there are mutations in the epigenetic regulation pathways involving TET2 and ASXL1 as well as RNA splicing and it has been seen that aberrant NK uh, kappa B uh, activation has been involved in the pathogenesis of this disease and overall the prognosis of the disease is very poor um, even uh, with extensive treatment um, the survival is not very good but now there have been some targeted therapies that are targeting CD123 um, and also they have been trying hematopo hematopoietic stem cell transplantation uh, in the first remission and that has shown some promising results. So that's it. That is plastic plasma cytoid dendritic cell neoplasm. This was a short video and I um, hope you liked it. Please let me know. Um, uh, uh, please give me your feedback and any other uh, topics that you would like me to make a video on. And thank you so much for listening.